Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have another JE main question on ENM and specifically dealing with Ohm's law and EMF. So let's read it. It says a cell E1 of EMF 6 volts and internal resistance 2 ohms is connected with another cell E2 of EMF 4 volts and internal resistance 8 ohms as shown in the figure. The potential difference across points X and Y is, and we get four possible answers. So essentially what they're asking is, what is the potential difference going from X to Y? And of course, it doesn't matter if you go around this way or if you go around that way. Either way, of course, the potential difference would have to be the same. So how do you figure that out? Well, first of all, we need to figure out what is the net EMF, because notice the two batteries are positioned in opposite directions. We have the positive side going this way, or directed in this way over here, and the other direction by the other one. If this one was turned around, then the total EMF would be the sum of the two, or 10 volts. But since this one is turned in the other direction, so that the plus is on this side, and the plus is on this side over here, they work against each other. So essentially, we can say that EMF net, the net EMF, in this case is going to be 6 volts minus 4 volts, which is equal to 2 volts. So essentially, we could remove those two and replace by a single EMF of 2 volts. Now, of course, that's not entirely true because they also have internal resistance we have to deal with. But from an EMF perspective, the net EMF is simply 2 volts directed in this way. So that means that the current will flow in this direction. So the next thing we need to do is use Ohm's law. Determine the current in the circuit. And we can see that by Ohm's law that the current I equals V over the total resistance. In this case, the V is the net voltage of 2 volts, and the total resistance would be the two summed together, 2 ohms plus 8 ohms, which is 10 ohms. So it would be 2 volts divided by 10 ohms, or 0.2 amps. So now we know the current flow through the circuit, in a counterclockwise direction. Finally, we can determine the potential difference between X and Y. So the change in the voltage going from X to Y is equal to, well, going from here across this battery, across E1, is a jump of 6 volts. So we go plus 6 volts. And then, since this has internal resistance of 2 ohms, we have a voltage drop due to the internal resistance that would be minus I, the current, times the resistance R. Minus because we're going with the flow of the current. So this would be equal to 6 volts minus I, which is 0 0.2, times R, which is 2 ohms. That would be amps, I should put in units. And so we get 6 volts minus 0.4 volt, which is 6.5 volt. Oop, uh, what am I doing here? Not 6.5, 5.6 volts. I got those turned around. And so that is the change in the voltage going from here to here. And of course, that's, there's nothing in between point P and point Y. So it's essentially the same point. And so going across this battery from here to here, we gain 6 volts, we drop 0.4 volt because internal resistance and the change of 5.6 volts, and notice that is answer C. Now, what if we were to go in the other direction? We should get the same result. Well, let's try that. So the change in voltage going from X to Y, but now we go in the opposite direction. Notice we go from here to here. We gain 4 volts by going across this batter from the left to the right side. So we end up with plus 4 volts, now notice that we're going in the opposite direction of the current. So instead of having a voltage drop due to the internal resistance, we're going to have a voltage rise because we're going against the current. And so it would be plus I times R, the internal resistance. In this case, that is 4 volts plus the current of 0.2 amps and the internal resistance of 8 ohms. So we get 4 volts plus 1.6 volts or Again, 5.6 volts. We wouldn't expect anything different, of course. So it didn't matter which way you went, going from X to Y, in either direction, you're going up with a change in voltage of 5.6 volts. Both point to answer C. And that is how it's done.